So let's solve this question. This has been asked in gate 2008. We have been given an ER diagram, an entity relationship diagram. And we have been asked to find the minimum number of tables, mind you, minimum number of tables. So the minimum number of tables needed to represent the above ER diagram. This essentially is a problem to convert an ER diagram into an equivalent relational model representation, right? That means we'll take this ER diagram and convert it into relations. So how many relations or how many tables do we need at minimum is what we have to find out. Now in order to solve this question, we must be thorough with the symbols used in ER diagram. Remember, a rectangle represents an entity set. A diamond, as you can see here, represents a relationship. These ellipses represent attributes. If an attribute is underlined, then it is known as a key attribute. When we have a rectangle inside another rectangle, such an entity set is known as a weak entity set. What is a weak entity? A weak entity is an entity set which depends on a strong entity in order to have its existence in the database. And what is this attribute which has dotted lines to it? Such an attribute with dotted lines to it is known as a partial attribute or a partial key rather. See. An attribute which is underlined is known as a key attribute or a key and an attribute which is underlined with, you see, with uh, dotted lines, right? So this is a uh, dotted lines have been used to represent or to underline this attribute. Such an attribute is known as a partial key. So what is a partial key supposed to do? A partial key when taken with the primary key of a strong entity will help to identify the records in a weak entity uniquely. Right? So this is a weak entity set, right? This is a weak entity set which is depending on a strong entity set which is P. Now taken this key attribute P1 from the entity set P, if we use the n1 key n1 partial key along with it then we will be able to identify each record of n uniquely right now we have to represent the tables so let's see how we can do this now what about these lines see this is double line this double line means that this entity set m is in total participation with the entity set p what do I mean by total participation? By total participation, I mean every entity of this entity set will belong to or will be in relationship with an entity in P. So every entity in the entity set M will be in relationship R1 with an entity of P. Right? And what about single line? Single line means that there is partial dependency or there is partial relationship. So this is the double line signifies a total relationship or a complete relationship whereas a single line signifies a partial relationship. That means there may be some entities which will not form any relationship with the other entity. That means, uh, like you can see over here, that there is a single line connecting P and R1. This means that P or there may be an entity or there may be at least one entity in P which will not be in any relationship with M. So that is what is known as a, particip a partial participation uh, and a total participation. 
Okay, now let's find the minimum number of tables. Now, in order to represent this M entity set, I need a table. So, in order to represent the entity set M, I need a table with the attributes M1, M2 and M3. In a sense, I am defining a schema by the name of M, right? And what about this P? I need another table in order to represent this entity set P and it will have two attributes to it. One is P1 which will be the key attribute or primary key and the other is P2. And what about this? this what about this weak entity set? How can we represent this weak entity set? Mind you, this weak entity set can be represented as a table but there are some constraints the constraint is that it will have its attribute that is n2 and it will also have n1 which is the partial key along with it it will contain the primary key of the of the entity set on which it is depending on like n has an identifying relationship with p and the key attribute of p is p1. So n will include this attribute, the key attribute from p into its schema because only with the help of this key attribute and this partial key n1 taken together, we will be able to identify every record of n uniquely. Otherwise, we will not be able at all times identify each tuple of n distinctively right so p1 and n1 together make up the primary key for n and this p1 mind you will be a foreign key which will point to the key attribute of p that is p1 right now the entities or the entity sets rather m p and n have been taken care of. What about the relationships? What about R1 and R2? Now remember, in order to take care of this relationship R1, we can simply use the foreign key constraint. So I'll make a slight modification here. What will be that modification? M will be written as M1, which is my primary key, M2, and M3 along with that in order to represent this relationship R1 we will include we will include the key attribute of P why include the key attribute of P because M is, is in a relationship R1 with P that's why we have to include the key attribute of P which is P1 which is P1 as a foreign key to P so P remains as it is P remains as it is that means we have P1 and P2 and this P1 is acting as a foreign key to this right so this this will take care this foreign key constraint takes care of this relationship R1 and what about the identifying relationship R2 how can we take care of this now in order to represent this identifying relationship R2 what we do is we make use of another foreign key. Now, how is this foreign key used? Now, this foreign key is used by appending it to the strong side, right? What, what do I mean by the strong side? The strong side is P. P is the strong entity, so I'm calling it the strong side, okay? So, this is my strong side and this is my weak side. Now, P is the strong entity or the owning entity. Why is it called the owning entity? It's called the owning entity because N depends on P for its existence. So, taken the key of P, like here we have taken the key of the entity set P, which is P1, and added it to the weak entity set. And the partial key together with the key attribute from P will make up the 
primary key for m so given a key or given a key value of p we can uniquely identify every record of the relation n and mind you this foreign key which we have added this foreign key that is p1 which we have added to n not only contributes to the primary key of n but also this foreign key will take care of the identifying relationship so this identifying relationship is taken care of this foreign key this identifying relationship is taken care of by this foreign key right so this is how we convert an er diagram into a relational model where we have in this case three relational schemas right so i hope this helps thank you